you. Welcome to Hannity tonight. If you are over the mass hysteria, if you're over politicizing and weaponizing of the coronavirus, you are not alone. That's why tonight we are focused on two major stories. First, we're going to call out anyone and everyone who's using this virus as a political weapon against the president. Sick, it's sad, but predictable. I'm sure in the end, the mob and the media, well, they will be advancing their new conspiracy theory and their newest hoax. Probably they'll come up with, hypothetically, I'm just guessing, wouldn't shock me, President Trump Putin, mad scientists in Russia, Ukraine are manufacturing the coronavirus on purpose so they can hurt innocent children and kill grandma and grandpa before they throw them over a cliff, before they feed them dog food. Look, it is time, in all seriousness, for simple fundamental truths to protect our fellow Americans. That means Democrats, that means Republicans, liberals, conservatives, and libertarians, and everybody in between. Viruses do not have a political identity. So tonight we will separate cold, hard truth from what is the mob's latest manufactured, irresponsible, over-the-top rhetoric. Our medical A-team and Dr. Oz tonight will explain. Plus, coming up, we will show you how Democrats and the media now want you to ignore real concerns about quid pro quo Joe and his apparent and his increasing inability to complete thoughts and deliver a cogent speech. It is now a serious campaign issue. By the way, it was serious to Democrats when Ronald Reagan was running for re-election. We have the evidence. But we start with the media mob's ongoing effort to now use a virus, an infectious disease, as a political weapon all to bludgeon President Trump yet again. I've said many times, if he cured cancer, they would likely want to impeach him for curing cancer. Now, the coronavirus is a serious disease. Now, should you and your family be concerned? Of course, you should be concerned about the flu. You should be concerned about a cold. You should be concerned about any health risk. Should you be informed? Absolutely. Do we all need to take necessary precautionary steps? Yes, all of us. But the coverage we are seeing from the media in the mob is beyond despicable and political. For example, Sunday, you got Chucky e. Todd boasting the coronavirus. I could actually help President Trump like the Iran hostage situation hurt Jimmy Carter. A Washington Post editorial calling it President Trump's Chernobyl. And over there at state-run conspiracy TV, MSDNC, poor liberal Morning Joe saying Trump's stupidity will cause Americans to die. And meanwhile, Joyless Reed, well, actually telling her viewers that the children of Trump supporters were more likely to spread the coronavirus to other kids. Just made that up, I guess. That's what they do. The lies, the conspiracy theories, the psychotic anti-Trump rage. Well, it's been nonstop. Sadly, this is all we've gotten for three plus years. Take a look. What is government really for? The government is there to protect you from terrorism, for a health thing, just exactly this thing. This is exactly the function of government, and our government is screwing up. But this may be Donald Trump's Katrina. This is an event that could take down a presidency. What the Iran hostage crisis was in the yeah. final year of Carter's presidency, not his fault, but it's, it's a test in real time. The president is doing nothing uh, but, but playing in his political sandbox. Uh, while this virus continues to spread silently across America. All right, these people sound like they really care about the country, protecting human life, or are they just looking for any and every way possible to bash President Trump? Last week's New York Times editorial spelled it out pretty clearly. They named the coronavirus the Trump virus, and they wrote, if you're feeling awful, you know who to blame. It's getting close to that lab conspiracy theory I was kind of joking about. That's how sick it is. Now, this kind of coverage has serious ramifications. Why people panic. Chaos ensues. Recently, a group of shoppers caught on tape. What were they doing? They were brawling. What were they brawling over? The last pack of toilet paper. Now, we've also witnessed a recent market sell-off, although today's drop likely had a lot more to do with an oil supply battle between the Russians and the Saudis than anything corona-related. But markets are skittish. Let's cut through all the hysteria and all the BS. Let's give you some simple truth and facts. Here's the Surgeon General of the United States of America. You don't believe Dr. Hannity? Let's listen to him. I'm not a doctor. People over the age of 60, they're much more likely to uh, develop complications from the coronavirus and to be hospitalized from the coronavirus. The average age of death is age 80. Now, what we also want communities to know is that if you are a child or young adult, you are much more, you're more likely to uh, die from the flu if you get it than you are to die from coronavirus. So there is something about being young that is protective. 
We want people to be reassured by that. We want people to know that we are really focusing in on those, gr uh, those uh, groups that are at highest risk for complications. Now, just to recap, according to the Surgeon General of the United States, people over 60, they're most at risk for corona-related complications or hospitalization. Now, the average age of mortality is 80. Young people, unlike H1N1, that tend to impact younger kids more than older people. But now, in this case, older people are much more likely to die from this well, from regular flu, actually, than coronavirus, believe it or not. And remember, despite earlier reports, the likely mortality rate could be as low as 1%. Dr. Fauci was out there in the New England Journal. In the first few hundred cases of corona in China, he wrote, quote, there were no cases in children younger than the age of 15. Either children are less likely to become infected or their symptoms were so mild that their infection escaped detection. By the way, as an older person, I'd rather it be on me. Let's be honest here. Kids have their whole lives ahead of them. And it's important to remember, this administration took unprecedented steps on the coronavirus, seriously, and a lot of criticism to boot. No president ever, except Donald Trump, ever acted faster, ever acted sooner, or have done more to stop the spread of an infectious disease. Keep in mind, the virus was not officially detected and named until January 7th. HO recognized it on December 30th, 30th of last year. That's pretty quick. Then on January 31st, the president declared a public health emergency, and he's the one that ordered the travel ban and quarantine, which we hadn't done in decades. And by the way, he did it against the advice of many, uh, by the way, that were offering him advice out of an abundance of caution. That's the travel ban to China. That's when that began. Three weeks later, quid pro quo Joe Biden, others called the president for doing this. This ban was xenophobic. Fake news, CNN suggesting the president is stigmatizing people from other countries. And for the better part of February, now, what were the Democrats do? Oh, that's right. They hardly addressed the virus at all. They were too busy and too focused on impeaching the president over nothing. Now they seem more interested in scoring what is nothing but cheap political points than actually working with the administration to protect our American family. Well, we want to protect every American life here. Today, the president asked for lawmakers, help them with a payroll tax cut to ease corona-related economic concerns. That is really going to help and be impactful to small business, hourly wage workers, et cetera, around the country. Well, hopefully the Democrats will come to the table and do what's right for America. Will they alleviate the economic fallout of corona, or will they do nothing to continue to use it as a political weapon? politicizing a disease. Again, coronavirus is a serious matter. It's not the end of days. Sadly, pandemics like this happen more often than any of us would like. H1N1 worldwide killed over about a half a million people, according to estimates. The U.S. has the best doctors. By the way, H1N1, we lost nearly 14,000 Americans. We have the best doctors, the best researchers, the best scientists anyone in the, anywhere in the world. And the Trump administration will continue to aggressively stop the spread of this infectious disease. We also forget people that get flu every year. Some years, tens of thousands of people die from the flu. Every year, people die from the flu. Now, should we be smart, wise, learn things, how to be neat, clean? Not, yeah, of course. Let's protect our families. But let's do it in a thoughtful way.